Good afternoon, guys. Uh, it's another session. Uh, it's a beautiful new month, uh, the month of March, and this is the first uh, episode of the Lunch Break Show uh, on this beautiful month. So today um, we'll be talking about digital media. Uh, we have a very special guest uh, all the way from Kenya. Uh, we have Mr. Roni Lusigi. Uh, who will um, introduce himself as to what he does and um, what our local federations and, and clubs should do in terms of media. So uh, before we start, as always, let's do this. Mr. Roni. Yes, yes, Tobang. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, my brother. How are you? How is Botswana? Uh, uh, Botswana, it's okay. It's a bit hot, but uh, we'll, we'll survive. I don't know. What, what time is it that side? It's 2.04. It's 2.04 p.m. here in Nairobi. Oh. So it's oh, a bit okay. hot. Mm. It's a bit hot. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think for, for, for my loyal uh, viewers, maybe you can introduce yourself and uh, we can get uh, on it with the program. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me here at Tabang, uh, for being your first guest in this first month. I like being number one, so <laughs> being here on date one <laughs> yeah. is, is very good. So uh, in brief, as you can see, I'm a young man, I'm still young. So uh, Ronnie Lusigi, I'm currently the digital media manager at the Football Kenya Federation. I've uh, been in the I've been in the sports industry uh, since 2016, uh, where um, I was just doing uh, some social media updates here and there. Uh, I started running social media accounts for Kenyan players, soccer players, and uh, with that, I, I got myself now my first job in 2018 with Kariobangi Sharks FC. Um, Kariobangi Sharks FC is a Karuban Sharks FC is a Kenya Premier League club. So uh, I took up the role as digital manager there in 2018 and served up to uh, 2020, just before COVID. Uh, in February, I was getting into the Football Kenya Federation, which uh, I'm still in there. I also do run a company known as Nairobi Sports Digital which uh, basically does publication on the digital media landscape for mainly football clubs in the Sekafa region, but also other sports within the, the East and Central African region. Um, so up to up to there, I think uh, is where I, I meet Tabang. Uh, he meets me as a digital media manager for the Football Kenya Federation. Um, I think uh, Tabang, I go on with uh, what we do specifically, my job. Um, I, th I think be, be, before we uh dive deep into that um maybe as a as a, a digital media manager at, at, uh, at the kenyan football federation uh maybe can you can you um explain or try and um, break down what uh, digital media is especially looking at uh sports uh, okay okay uh in, in my view and and in in the environment of parade around when you speak of digital media, we are basically meaning the digital platforms, which is mainly your website and um, your social media, uh, those two. So it's just, to me, it's just the digital platforms that we use to communicate to people. Uh, for basically like a federation, we do, we do run a website, we do run um, uh, pages and accounts on, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and we also have a a YouTube account for the Football Kenya Federation. So we operate in those in those five realm, realms. We are looking at considering TikTok because it's also growing in Kenya. But for now, we operate from there. So for me, digital media is basically the digital platforms and how we use them to communicate and to engage and to keep in touch with the, the sporting fraternity. Okay. And then uh, looking at the, the, the Kenyan landscape, what has been, or what, what would you say has been the, the impact of digital media, especially for, for the Federation and for the, the maybe the, the Kenyan Premier League? 
Um, uh, first of all, we have a unique journey. Uh, personally, me, I have a unique journey because um, at around the time I'm getting into to do my first job at Katubangi Sharks FC, the Kenya Premier League had just lost its broadcaster, which was then uh, Supersport, the South African company. So uh, we there was a lot of reliance on TV to keep uh, in touch with fans. So when when in 2018 guys were trying to do these things of, of social media, it was not taken that seriously. It was not taken that seriously until guys lost um, the TV. And now the only way to engage with the fans now became um, social media. So uh, up, up till 2018, not many clubs used to take it seriously. Um, uh, the Federation was, qu was quite a step ahead, but not that strong. I think they had only one guy that time. So um, we did take up uh, in 2018 is when clubs started becoming more serious in this in this real. Uh, personally, I was pushing at Karibangi Sharks, where we we became now the first club to start live streaming our matches on Facebook because the league didn't have a broadcaster. So we had first tested with highlights. We used to to record our games uh, with two cameras. We tested with highlights. Uh, we used to post highlights every Monday after the weekend the response was good so we moved to doing live broadcasts so in between 2018 2019 facebook live as a means of showing football in kenya the interest grew and uh, part of us working at karibangi sharks used to offer support to the federation to show women games and um, youth team games the games with no tv rights issues with the the, 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 the calf so basically as per now i'd say for the Premier League clubs, we stand at uh, uh, we stand at out of the eighteen clubs, twelve have hired people specifically to do this, and have put them on a salary. Twelve. We still have an issue with the other six, and uh, in among these twelve, we'd say eight are the ones strongly committed. These other ones again, they are on and off in their payment here and there, but it has really helped, especially the league. You know, the league uh, went under new management. Uh, last year, so it has really helped. It has really been growing. You can check it out. The Bet King Premier League. It has also helped us uh, in recruitment. In recruitment, uh, you wouldn't believe it. One of our hosts got his job courtesy of a social media challenge, where we put up: uh, if you think you are a good broadcaster, uh, send your thirty-second video. Guys were sending in, and one of the guys we have right now is um, as our host. We found him through through that means. But basically, right now, for the Federation, it's really helping us to engage with the fans. Uh, it is really helping us to keep in touch. Our youth games, especially, and our women games now have, have wider reach because of our impact on social. And it's also helping us in the B2B, business to business, because we, we did open a platform on LinkedIn where we try to share business-relevant content. What we try right now is to try and saturate our to, to put our, our content into categories. So in LinkedIn, we try posting about our the level of engagement we are getting, and the sponsorship deals we are getting, the sponsorship opportunities we are getting, the live broadcast we are doing, things that we think are relevant to the business community, things that are not entertainment uh, per se. And then on the other three platforms, of course, we seek to engage and to entertain uh, and to inform. Okay. Um, I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd also want to want to understand. Um, in terms of you, you mentioned that um, there are other digital media persons uh, for the for the for the Bed King Premier League club. Um, are they roped in by the federation, or are they roped in by the individual clubs? Okay. So basically, now for the clubs, each club does hire their, their own social media manager. Uh, what we do as a federation is to try to just periodically engage them, share knowledge, but each club is responsible for, for hiring their own. But the account being run, the league account, is of course uh, the guys hired by the federation. Uh, we, we have two teams, one team, uh, one team running the social media and another team focused on the website. So for us, basically, it's about the men's and women national team the league and the, the lower leagues, the main, the Premier League and the lower leagues. So uh, the Federation, we, we, currently for, we currently have a team of 
six, a team of six. Um, four of us are on, are on social media, operating both the national team and the league account, and two are web designers uh, running the website for us, run uh, writing match reports and other and other things on the website. And then um, with 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 all the activity and all the the personnel that you have, um, do you have any um, digital sponsors that are specifically? Uh, maybe um, would sponsor maybe the, a live broadcast. Uh, have there been any any such sponsors that have come on board? Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and and that I think will open up to to another realm. We we got our first purely digital sponsor, though it was only for an event. And uh, last year, last year we we did venture for the first time into esports. Uh, it was during the November international break where fans were not allowed to the stadium. So we got our captain, Victor Wanyama, and our veteran goalkeeper who was returning after, after a long time out of the national team to play in a FIFA 21 match um, a day before the national team played uh, Comoros at home. So at that time is the time that we found a sponsor who came to advertise specifically. It was a one hour show. So and the, and the sponsor was a Scope Market. Uh, they are an online trading company, so they were looking for traders who basically, to them, it made the it made sense that someone who can live stream a game is someone who can spend time online trading, looking at the stocks, how they are rising and falling. So, for for now, our success story of getting a purely digital media based sponsorship, it was only that they paid for that event, and uh, we we tried to 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 sell them to 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 give them back value. Uh, we had we had good success. We had 1,100 people streaming live, and um, after 24 hours, uh, 23,000 plus people had come to to watch the the recorded version. Again, you know we're in Africa, so not everybody will stream live. Others are better off waiting for it to end for them to come and watch, because data that way data will be cheap. But that's in a nutshell. That's where that's on, or the only time you've gotten a sponsor basically for the digital product that we offer. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that the, the league had lost uh, sponsorship, the TV rights with, um, from Supersport. Um, currently, um, are, there, are there any, uh, what's, what has been happening in terms of the league, uh, in terms of coverage? Uh, have you been utilizing more of um social media because i saw on your on your youtube page or uh, youtube channel uh there are some highlights um there are quite of the it's updated on on a regular um how has that affected the the uh the league so what happened uh, uh, starting this season that is uh the the league was contracted to a company when it was losing the tv the tv deal but starting last year the the contract ended so the federation took back the rights to run the league, and now we have Star Times as the official broadcaster. Uh, they started uh, in October last year uh, with the preseason, and then since November they've been showing our matches. Um, and so every weekend we have at least four games uh, being shown on Star Times. One one on free to air occasionally, but basically four is the the threshold for the weekend. So right now we do have a official broadcaster and. Um, thanks to better understanding right now of the digital platforms, we have a good understanding with them in terms of things like highlights and other content. So our our official broadcaster Star Times allows us to share uh, goals highlights uh, uh, as soon as the game ends. We are allowed two hours after the game. You can share the you, you know you'll always see the goals on YouTube on Facebook. Uh, on Instagram and on Twitter. So we the, the TV right deal right now is very much tailored to the digital landscape. Uh, you can share even highlight skills and a celebration where we it's a very it's a very I'd say healthy partnership that we have with Star Times right now. Oh yeah. Um looking looking at the, the, the transformation that's that's um currently going on, um we, we saw that the pandemic changed a lot of things. Uh, in terms of how we engage, how we uh, how we view sports as as a federation, um, how has the pandemic uh, maybe accelerated your uh, 
uh, your digital transformation plans for the league? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it really it really changed the way we do things because uh, when I was getting in last year, we need we did, we used to have a lot of physical meetings and a lot of um, bureaucracy when it comes to even sharing of content. But um, when COVID happened and guys were doing things remotely, uh, it became easier. Uh, I think we pivoted these days, uh, even though uh, the the impact has gone down and guys are back to the office. I'd say these days decision making is quicker, and uh, we also during the COVID time we really, we really, really, really got a lot of archive content from our our main broadcaster, our our main channel. That's the Kenya Broadcasting Channel that was showing games in the 80s and in the 90s. So we really delved into a lot of archive content. And then we also, during that time, we also learned that it's better to to streamline. So like the we used to have a page for the under 20 boys, under 23 boys. So during that time, we just said there's a page for the national men's team, which will have all the age groups up to the senior, and another one for, for the national women's team. So I think uh, it gave us a, a, a moment to reflect and to re-strategize and to re-evaluate ourselves it is also during this time that we we did open a linkedin account and and started running it so i think the pandemic really helped us look inside and um, and pivot to to where the world is going right now and then um i think also one one would um want to understand in terms of um looking at how now things are in terms of how we utilize uh, digital media um can you from a, a perspective or from a perspective of the uh, the Kenyan Premier League and the Premier League teams, um, what what trends should we then look out for? Uh, what should uh, teams and federations be doing right now uh, in order to, to leverage uh, digital media? I, I think number one, uh, it will be first to acknowledge uh, digital as part of their strategy. I think uh, we, we all agree that these days there's nothing like a digital strategy and a club strategy on the other hand. Um, I think for me, first of all, you need to bridge the gap between the two. Digital should be part of your strategy. And um, the, the guys running digital need more access to club information and even to, to these board meetings. I think num number two, you have, to, you have to give respect to the guys running digital. Uh, inform them. Uh, tag them along to high high ranking meetings that you can that are allowed because it's very bad for you to be running a page for a football team on Facebook and then uh, everybody is announcing Tabang has signed for Gormaya and you the digital manager of the club you don't know so I think uh, the the teams that have that have really improved in Kenya have done that they they've now come to a point where the digital media manager is considered among those in the leadership levels so that uh, key decisions that need to be communicated are there. And then we, you need to have a budget for digital. There's no running away from it. We are not saying you have to have the big budget, but there's no running away from it. Uh, if you believe digital is going to help you, you must put something in it. Um, you must try and not necessarily pay huge sums, but try and first of all, facilitate. Um, you must improvise according to, to where you are because not everybody can, can get somebody and maybe put them on a $300. I think in Kenya right now, it's a $300 is the, is the basic rate most digital media managers are earning. But because not everybody can do that, you can, you can go for the students and facilitate them with equipment and data and, uh, and other small costs that they can help you. They can help you with, but you need, you need, it cannot run it cannot run as a volunteer's program. It's too, it's too hard. And that volunteer program now brings me to the fourth one. Uh, you need to put a legal framework towards this. We're trying to encourage clubs that a page is your asset. Uh, I won't mention the club, but one of our big clubs in, in this country has lost its page twice because it was run by a volunteer. And when the volunteer falls out with the leadership of the club, he turns the name from the name of the club to maybe a super, he sells it to a supermarket or to, to another guy. So you need to put a legal framework. Even if someone is a volunteer, he needs to sign papers acknowledging 
uh, he will he or she will conduct themselves in in the right manner and when the time comes to leave he or she will leave the club's digital platforms in good shape uh, because i think it's an issue here in east africa i don't know about your country but it's an issue here of, of guys uh, uh, if tabang used to work for township rollers and township rollers don't pay him for two months you wake up tomorrow there's no township rollers on facebook and now it means the township rollers when they get another person they have to start uh, all over again so for me i think i think for a start those four for a start those four uh, are, are what clubs should start with before going into any other thing no uh, um i think with with, with us um having noticed uh, some some activity online um you'd find that there's there's no continuity in terms of um how we manage our our our, our digital platforms you'd find that um a team like uh, let's say uh, extension gunners um for that particular season they would have um an interim committee that's in charge of um the digital media once now they um vacate the office they leave with the digital platform they leave with the passwords they leave with everything so whoever now comes in they have to start afresh so that's why you'd find that there are so many pages of of, of um a, a particular team uh because whoever comes in now does his own thing once they leave they leave with everything and it it it, it creates confusion among the fans um there is no easy way of keeping analytics in terms of um if you were to present to a sponsor to say uh, these are our numbers this is what we do this is how we get these um as such you we, we we do not get um such such information um so mr mr Lusigi, um in terms of maybe some of the the uh, the future trends that we might see uh in in, in terms of uh, digital media um if you have or if you uh, something that um, has come to your mind um are there any future trends that we should uh, be looking out for uh in terms of uh sports yeah, yeah before i get to that future trends i think what you are saying last point was very important we need to separate uh, administration the political administration from the secretariat of the club uh the issues of interim changes affecting the secretariat and also sometimes when there are no changes it goes back to the first point of respecting this guy you find a lot we have clubs with a lot of interference from the executive such that uh, they want they want to to impose on the on the digital media manager uh, write this write this sometimes it does not make sense to to do some things so i think uh, leadership also need to to trust the guys that they've hired to to run their page um uh, in terms of in terms of future trends i think uh, first we just need first we need uh, to streamline and and professionalize our digital uh, how we handle digital in sports as a continent first we need to do that um before we, we think of future trends but of course in future trends we are, we are speaking of things like live stream going up which will mean that the clubs which will be willing to put in the money to to get the equipment or other clubs should look of how they can work together to get equipment to to facilitate things such as this live stream we have a club in kenya known as wazito wazito fc happened to have a very good production team with with very good production and they occasionally do share it with other teams especially before the league broadcaster came when guys now many clubs were live streaming wazito would share equipment so i think we should look at uh, in the future trends i'm seeing collective bargaining towards uh, promoting this maybe sister clubs neighboring clubs clubs in one city coming together and seeing how can we get um, equipment together and how can we distribute distribute them and be able to use them and also um, players getting more uh, player activism i think uh, it is also picking up in kenya we are seeing a lot of players using their social media handles to advocate for uh, matters uh, of importance in our society um but i think for uh, we, we should also consider esports and and video gaming as one of the future trends because one thing we should we should acknowledge as african football 
we've lost this young generation. So we must put in place strategies to gain them back. That's why we are also trying in to get into esports. I think it's only Egypt and South Africa that have done it successfully as federations. But we must acknowledge we've lost this, we've lost these generations. So we need to to bring them back in with what they are doing. And then I think also localizing of content is, is something in the future trend because right now you read what social media clubs run. It's a problem sometimes maybe the executive will be hard on you, but we really want to sound uh, in a Kenyan sense, we want to sound British. I'm, I'm reading a page of a club I know is coming from a very Swahili speaking region, but all the time they're writing it's as if uh, it's a newspaper. The, the lads today went out and did this and this. But you ask him, does your fan speak that language? So we, we, need, a, we need a lot of uh, localizing. You'll see Inter Milan writing in Italian. You'll see, you'll see Paris and German writing in French. But it's only here that you'll come uh, to, to, to a country people speak Pidgin, but everybody does not want to write Pidgin. Uh, uh, people, I think we should learn from other sectors like in the guys selling beer in Kenya. They really have very good social media handles. They speak Swahili, the social Swahili that people speak uh, in, in their social place at the barber shop or at the bar. But us, I think it's, it's about going from more of reporting to coming to engaging. I think that's the, that's, that's the future trend we should go as Africa. We should differentiate reporting and engaging. That's why we need to hire young people. We need to take more gambles. The problem is we are hiring not anything wrong with them, but we are hiring too much of journalists. And journalists are coming with the newsroom standards to social media, while yeah. social media is a different animal. So uh, if you want to, to tick the box of localizing content, which I think it should be a feature trend, we need to, to gamble more. We need to take these guys in campuses. We need to take these young guys who understand TikTok and Instagram and incorporate them to, to our teams because at the moment, some teams are really, really, really doing newsroom stuff uh, on their digital platforms, which they shouldn't be doing. So no, to me, localization is a, is a, is a great trend. Uh, I like see a good example is Simba. Um, I know you may not be understanding Swahili, but you, you look at Simba, what Simba is see Tanzania do. What, how they write uh, is, is really how their fans do speak. When it, when it, because I've been privileged to be to Tanzania a few times, there are neighboring countries, listen to their music a lot. When I see what Simba writes, I see, I see what, uh, what their artists sing. I see what Tanzanians do on the social, on the social side. So uh, it's just that an increase in video. We need to increase our capacity to share video. Uh, KCCA Uganda is a very good example. KCCA FC, they, they have a, a weekly show and uh, you'll normally find the videos there. Uh, so video, we are going towards video. We should remember that we are competing, first of all, with European clubs. So there's that standard somebody is seeing. So we need to raise our standards, even if it's video. You may start with a mobile phone, but don't stay there. You need to raise your standards and look for a professional camera because this 20-year-old, when he looks at his phone, and this is the quality of video West Bromwich Albion is showing him. And then after scrolling, he sees the quality of video his club in his country is showing. You even go to the quality of the picture. You see on, on social, you can, you can see the difference in quality of picture. So uh, yeah. we, we have to invest in equipment uh, also going into the future. Um, I think maybe to, to take you back a little bit, um, you had mentioned that um, one, one, one other way that teams maybe can leverage uh, um, digital media, uh, it's whereby they, they, they come together in terms of production um, and then uh, maybe share. Can you maybe break it down a bit? Uh, okay, okay, okay. I was giving the example of, uh, I gave the example of a Kenyan club known as Wazito. Um, they, they, they were lucky to, to, they have a new owner uh, who's got some dollars in him. Uh, so uh, he's put up a lot in terms of production. So this season, before this season, uh, they they had better equipment for live streaming. You see, they had better equipment for live streaming. But now what they used to do is, if you speak to them in advance, you can plan and have your game somewhere in a, as a double header. 
So their team will play after you, but they'll play before you and help you record the game, which is not only good for digital, but it's also good for the football side to send it to the scouts here and there. So if you use that model, you can be able maybe to agree as a team in a city. If, if it's Zambia and we are three teams in Lusaka, we are all in the league and we don't have equipment, we, we can agree on basic equipment, how we can, we, can, we can buy them and say maybe for home games, we'll be using this. So if, if, you have, if you have six cameras that you can use for home games, if it's video or if it's training, it can be used for this team on Monday, it can be used for this team. I mean, there's no shame in that. AC Milan and Inter Milan are still moving to a new stadium together. Yeah. So th- there's no shame in, 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 in two clubs coming together for basic things like production. If it's, a, if it's a studio space and you can be able to do like three teams, uh, you'll be doing here content with your players during the week, uh, maybe just sharing their lifestyle. You can come together if you're in one city and it's convenient for all of you, put up a small studio. Everybody contributes to the rent. Everybody contributes to the staff remuneration. And, uh, and you, you find a way to move. And also with knowledge sharing, which is a, I don't know why we don't like it or we are not used to it, but I think COVID has accelerated it. But uh, for my experience, I don't know you as the bank, but it's much easier to speak to a European on knowledge sharing, even on what you're speaking to than it is for an African. I think we need to, not just within yeah. our borders, but also outside our borders, we need to increase our, our knowledge sharing, how open we are to knowledge sharing. Because right now you look for somebody uh, up north, north, north of Kenya is Ethiopia. It takes you two months to get, to get that person, even for a two-minute phone call or, 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 or a 10-minute or WhatsApp chat. But you look for yeah. somebody in Milan, He's, you, you get him that way. So I think as Africans, we should, we should open up more to sharing and doing what, like things like you are doing, doing webinars together. We are trying to push it in our league that especially for the digital media managers, we have a WhatsApp group constantly sharing information, constantly telling you, hey, Tabang, I think what today you did uh, as your club, you didn't do well. Uh, you need to improve yes. in that side. Telling you, uh, I'm looking at your Instagram content it's not fit for that Instagram, uh, maybe the, the dimensions of the picture. So knowledge sharing is also same as sharing resources. We, we should do a lot of that because we are dealing, this thing is generational and it's not easy. Uh, what I learned working in clubs and in the federation, it's, change is not easy. So we should stop assuming that we'll wake up one day and all the chairmen uh, of football clubs in our country will be here now we are doing digital it we 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 have to be patient and we have to persevere and we have to remember your skills uh, you may have the best skills but you are only def- your success will only be defined by how you can get others to buy into it and to implement it i've seen many people run away from this from this industry because they come and tell you oh, i had this idea now it's 3 weeks it's not moving uh, that's life. Even today, if you go to the beer industry and you want to bring change, you want to tell them, stop using a brown bottle, start using a white bottle. They, 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 won't, they won't just say, yes, this is wonderful. You'll find people who've been doing things in a certain way. So for, for guys, because most of us are young, uh, for guys uh, aiming to do this thing on digital media, most of us are young, most of us don't have the name. Uh, so you have to be patient and you have to, to develop some thick skin because Others will have competition advantage over you. There's someone who will come and say, I've been at multi-choice for 15 years. They'll give him a salary and give him the social media page to run. But you will come and say, I'm coming out of University of Nairobi. I think I have ideas. Nobody will give you the same money. So you have to, to be patient and to build yourself and, and to find places even to volunteer. Even if it's not paying you, when I call you Tabang today and you tell me I'm the admin of Township Rollers, and then I go and take, check Township Rollers. I see the last update was in November 2020. I won't yeah. want to know you are not being paid. You took the responsibility as the admin. You, it's better you do something and you tell me, I'm only sharing photos because I don't have equipment to do video editing and to share highlights. Or I'm only sharing photos during the weekend because the team trains far from where I work from. At least from there, that is how we grow. That is how we grow. And there are opportunities in this digital 
landscape. Right now, European clubs are starting to open African accounts. You see uh, Roma with a Pijin account, with a Swahili account. Tomorrow mm. it will be uh, looking for a Swahili account or a, or a Hosa account. You won't tell them that uh, I'm good, but now they didn't pay me, so I boycotted. If you are taking this up, you need to take it up mm. in the situation that you are in and try and do the best in that situation because as you said you you've seen our videos on youtube updated yeah you, you we didn't have to tell you we are doing it you came and you saw so we can only show what we do it won't be easy uh, i'm not saying it's smooth sailing here uh, but it won't be easy even for us right now there there are some decisions that you you won't be able to push through yeah Okay. And then um, I, I think ha having having worked with um, or having worked with so many so many clubs, um, can you maybe uh, in a few seconds maybe share some of the um, more innovative ways that club are currently using uh, in terms of uh, fan engagements and um, mm -hmm. what like how how are they uh, navigating the digital media space? Um. Uh, when we had Karabangi Sharks two years ago, we I'm trying to look it up here. Just a minute. I think I'll drop the link. I'll drop the link on on the chat box here. We did do a club documentary. Uh, I think um, film is is one of the areas we are looking to to engage. Uh, at that time, it was a hard decision for the club because uh, the club didn't have a sponsor. But at least the club did settle did look for some cash and uh, we did the documentary and a month after the documentary we had three sponsors uh, looking for us because it's a club in the slum and the three sponsors were betting companies all of them because they were looking for a way to get to the grassroots so i think uh, i'm i'm very surprised when I, I see very many like we are the first ones to do it in kenya we have big clubs in kenya when i see big clubs in africa that you can't find a piece of film on them. Uh, I need to be able to know maybe what Nkana Football Club is all about. I need to be able to know their history. And read these days, we don't read. We don't go, uh, guys our age don't go to Wikipedia and spend two hours writing notes on nah. this is the history of Mufulira Wanderers. But you give them you give them 20 minutes. Or like this piece that we did was only for 29 minutes. So, uh, you, you give them just a few minutes of, of some good content and you you have them you you have them buy into your club so i'm just sharing it let me copy and paste uh, okay yeah so i've just placed it there so you can look at documentaries guys may think it's 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 very expensive but it's i, I won't mention the figures of course but to me it's not very expensive it's a worthy it's a worthy thing um it's a worthy thing you can look at it again i depending on the country in kenya we have a huge video gaming culture so clubs are trying as there are things in the pipeline around esports i think you'll be seeing in the in the near future uh in, in the near future you'll be seeing them and then we uh, also graphics graphics is really taking up it's really taking up um look at again wazito you see in kenya they do a lot of graphics so graphics is a good example it's a good example and again back to live stream if you can live stream part of your training session they even do pre-match they do pre-match and post-match on their own page and a pre-match and post-match yeah. in a test you can do it with a phone you can do it with a phone and a good microphone at a, at a very low cost so uh things like pre-match and post-match and then it goes down to consistency don't disappear during the weekend we've we've already i think you've already mentioned it you need to engage i think one thing i'll give majority of kenyan clubs the tick is that yeah. they engage they engage on monday they are talking to you on tuesday they are talking to you it's no longer it's no longer a thing on the side and uh, the social media so i think uh, from a Kenyan sense, you can look at what Wazito FC are doing. Yeah, you can look at Karyobangi Sharks. Uh, you can, um, for, I, I mentioned KCCA in Uganda. And um, 
Simba and uh, and Yanga in in Tanzania. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the, it's, those are the ones I'd, I'd recommend. Okay. Um, Mr. Lusing, I think. Uh, okay. Um, I think Mr. Lusing, in, in, in closing or in wrapping up, um, any, any last words you would want to share with our, um, our federations, our local football teams? I, I think I, I lost you when you're saying, you're saying I should share something with our federations and local football teams. Huh? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd just say... So, yeah, um, uh, I was saying in, in... Uh, Okay, Tabang, I'd say for... I'd say for, for, for federations and for clubs, uh, just start. Just start. There is nothing... Nobody is ever too late to start. Uh, number two... Uh, improvise, improvise, improvise. We, as a continent, most of our clubs and federation are not in the best of financial conditions, but improvise. Improvising is looking for volunteers, maybe from campus, looking for volunteers from other, other, other areas to get there, to get there. Number three is seek and exchange knowledge. As clubs and federations, we need to speak to each other. We need to hear a club in Botswana calling a club in South Africa to share knowledge on matters digital. We need to, to see a club in Nigeria, to speak to a club in Kenya. Sometimes these things, they are just a matter of information. They're just a matter of knowledge sharing. So um, we need to, to share and to seek out knowledge. Number four, and most importantly, separate political wing from the secretariat. Uh, of the club we cannot we cannot sell uh with too much politics in it so give guys those respect and then listen to them these guys we may not have colleges already offering degrees in digital media but these guys who are coming to do to you majority of them know what social media is and they are experts so listen to them uh, listen to them uh, you may have your own views but look at how you are blending them. They may be young, they may be in their early 20s, but when they tell you things on this side, um, please, 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 you need to listen because out from, out from listening, you know what to chase. A lot of us now are still chasing uh, what we call vanity metrics. We're still chasing how big yeah. my following is. People have moved now to how much are you engaging. We are still chasing how good my equipment is but how how are you decimating what your equipment is is producing so when you listen to these guys you stop chasing vanity metrics and you start chasing metrics that matter and um, been in situations earlier in my career where you go somewhere to pitch something digital and someone who does not understand it insists on on, on doing the presentation and things go south very very quick so just trust and respect these guys uh, for our federations and our clubs. But you need to always start and to always improvise and localize. Those three things we will put you there. I think, uh, I, I don't think, because again, in improvising, again, it, it will say there is no fixed, there are no fixed rules in this game. That's why you need to improvise always and to listen to these guys, because what he told you works in January. It may not be working in June. So don't come and tell him, you told me in January, this is what is working. We are, we are living in a fast-paced world when you speak about digital. That's why, again, you need to listen and to keep on improvising. So I just think uh, it's for that. And again, just in conclusion, to encourage the guys working in this. This is a new, basically a new industry in, in our continent. Nobody is viewing it. Not everybody is viewing it as a job. So you need to persevere. You need to persevere, but you need somewhere to share your skills. If you believe you are good in digital, 
you're good in running social media handles, you need somewhere to share and to showcase your skills. I started with a player. He happened to be my brother in the league. It is with this page that I ran it very well. The club used to ask, how comes this player's page is doing well than the club itself? That's how I got a job at the club. So you need somewhere, no matter how small, where you can showcase you have your skills. You cannot be selling air. You cannot be telling guys, I'm very good at this. You need to demonstrate. So look for somewhere and look for somewhere. It may be even your university's sports team. Start from there. Look for somewhere to start. And when you come to this side, everybody's looking to work in the, in, in the sports industry. But it's a good industry because you do what you love, but it's not as an easy industry. So you must persevere because what you are doing is new and new things don't don't auger well with human beings so persevere and look for somewhere to demonstrate your skills uh mr lesiki mm -hmm. uh, it's been it's been a pleasure uh thank you for for taking your time to uh to join us and um share your knowledge with us uh we just want to say thank you i know we've been uh, back and forth uh, on LinkedIn, trying to uh, trying to communicate. But um, let me say thank you for, for joining, and I hope to um, bring you on board uh, next time so that we can uh, share other aspects of um, uh, of our football or our sports. Sure, sure. Any time, any time. And again, I just encourage any other person who's doing what you are doing or doing any other thing that is helping us to share knowledge as people from this side of the world. Let's keep on doing it. All right. Um, guys, I think that's that's a wrap from us. Uh, the first show of the first of the third month, uh, we're talking about uh, digital media and how federations and clubs can utilize it. So thank you for, for all those that joined and um, uh, be sure to check out uh, the the video on YouTube, it will upload it on, on YouTube. So in closing, uh, Mr. Lusigi, thank you for joining us. Sante.